This is Dennis Wolven with the Active Trend Traders. I want to welcome you to Making Money Trading Stocks and ETFs for uh, Friday. This is uh, Jan July 20th, 2018. I'm going to go ahead and start my video so that uh, basically I can you see how I you see how I dress every day every day for the market. And I, I'm so formal, uh, you know, teacher and. Uh, you know, my ball cap, and that's about all I need to be ready to go. So let's get going. I uh, want to welcome everybody today. I'm glad you can make it. Or remember that we are using Zoom. You can uh, chat not only with me, but also chat amongst yourself. You can see something interesting. Uh, if you have a particular stock you want me to take a look at before we finish uh, uh, today, which is typically going to be about 10 to 15 minutes. Please type that in early so I can so we can take a look at that. Uh, I want to remind everybody that all the materials we do present are for training purposes only. Traders should always pay for trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Uh, past performance is not an indication nor a promise of future performance. So a little bit of who I am. I really believe in, in, in the motto of our company, which is to clarify, simplify, so that we can all multiply. I continuously work on a regular basis in seeking ways to make it both clear and more simple uh, 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 in people's trading uh, arena. And um, actually in the process of, I wouldn't say coaching my wife on how to trade, but she's learning how to trade uh, futures and also learning a little bit about trading stocks and all that kind of stuff. And so it's really kind of interesting to watch her growth pattern. And also it enables me to modify how I coach and teach because, you know, if, and, and I've actually teamed her up with um, her cousin and uh, uh, who lives up in Washington state. And so it's working really well uh, because I think sometimes spouses, it's a challenge for them to teach each other one-on-one. -on -one. However, uh, including that both uh, um, um, your spouse and a teammate, it works a lot better. So just a little, that was free advice. <laughs> Most trainers come from lack of patience and a compulsion to do something. We have a terrible time to sit on our hands and waiting. Uh, the trading game is a lot like if you're a hunter, if you're a fisher, there are fisher, then there are certain times when you go to the lake or there are certain times when you go to the field when you are, you are hunting to be able to, one, give yourself the best opportunity to bring home the bacon, if you will, or bring home the salmon. Uh, trading much the same way. Our objective of the um, How to Make Money Trading Stocks uh, webinar is to basically provide timely, actionable intel. Uh, it's a review at the end of the week, setting us for next week, and then we... Um, uh, look forward into next week. Uh, I both provide alerts for both premium members and non-premium members. I do uh, suggest, you know, if you want some of the bonus alerts we do, do sign up as a, you know, as a, a just a, a subscriber to the newsletter. And that way on some of the trades that we do, about one to one trade per month or about 10 uh, trades per year, you'll get a notification of when we're trading those. Uh, so we'll do a real quick market review. Uh, we, we are at or are just playing with a uh, resistance ceil a ceiling. Monthly expirations happen and have been taking place. Uh, there is, tends to be an upward bias into that level. Next week, we may have a little bit of a pullback because monthly expirations, of course, will be complete. So we'll take a look at stocks and uh, performance. One of the things that we're prepping for right now for the premium members, of course, uh, is prepping to do the uh, 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 the uh, pre-earnings runs. And uh, we're positioning ourselves to be able to get into those as we speak. And you'll be getting some uh, uh, trade information coming out over the weekend on that. Uh, here's how we're doing for the year. Um, and then, of course, here's where we're going overall per strategy for the year. Uh, really focused in the last half of the year on getting strategy one going again, and, and strategy two is doing fine, strategy three is doing fine. 
It's an interesting strategy three. Um, this year's been a little bit more of a challenge on strategy three than in past years. And I think it's primarily because of just the zigzag nature of the market uh, over the past year. So it's been kind of interesting uh, in that regard. So there's where we're sitting as of the end of the year. Uh, we always, for the premium members, put out this uh, uh, no go, uh, go, no go table uh, that I uh, call it. I put it out on, on Saturday, uh, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, so they'll be ready for Monday morning. And then also, I, I did an update this week in the mid midsection of the week uh, because some things had changed on it. So we highlighted those, to get this out. And what this does, it provides precise uh, numbers where we can expect to either take action or where you know one can plan their trades around. So it's good, for, you know, it's a great thing for folks to be able to, you know, that way they don't necessarily have to rely on the triggers. They can just build their own uh, um, um, campaign and, and base it around these technical uh, uh, significant levels on the individual stocks and ETFs. Currently, we are looking at uh, our seven magnificent seven ETFs, so along with one, two, three, four, five uh, different stocks. Uh, TSA, Impression, Tesla, and BABA are two of those. We're also running strategy three on those also. So here's where we work out for the week. Uh, we're in BABA on a long trade, HTHT on a long trade. Uh, two strategy, uh, two trades going. One is a earnings run for Baba with a uh, just buy and straight call option that expires the week of uh, its earnings, and then I'm waiting for setups. Uh, uh, Maverick has just launched a, a uh, an alert just as we we're going on air uh, to all premium members here on Tesla to sell some premium going into next week. Uh, we're waiting on Baba and Spiders for something to set. A little bit of negative cash flow on uh, uh, strategy three this week, uh, but we, we basically kept things well within control uh, Control and didn't come anywhere near hitting our max stop loss. Again, we have a bonus uh, trade going HTHD. So I want to talk specifically today about gold. Um, we, we started to see a little bit of a turnaround in gold today, but, but the big question that the majority of people are asking is, Okay, yeah, we've been we've been watching this. We've been nibbling a little bit as it's been going down because we know that gold has a, a um, uh, we know that gold tends to bottom somewhere in this plus or minus four weeks uh, session from the middle of July, and it appears. And again. This is a tendency chart. It basically gives us the tendency of from about February, gold tends to sell off into July. Well, it can actually sell off into the very end of July. When's the end of July? Next week. And then it tends to get a rebound and a rip higher. How much higher does it usually go? Uh, gold tends to go somewhere between 8 and 12%. And so with that being said, what we may be looking at is being right about there uh, in our, um, you know, towards the end of the uh, month of July. And who knows, this year gold may follow almost precisely the, uh, uh, the pattern of its seasonality, which is at the end of July, going into the first part of August, it tends to get a buy. And I want to go over the, uh, the, the uh, chart of gold and then how we will basically be trading that. Because on our JNUG uh, trade, we were actually stopped out this past week, but it recovered. Uh, I do a really great job of, uh, of um, putting my stop losses almost exactly where a stock tends to turn around. Um, it's a it it is a significant you know it is a technically significant area where where a stop loss should be. Uh, however, I find it very interesting that Murphy's law regarding trading is alive and well. So that's what we've got going there, and we'll come back and say goodbye in just a second. Let's look at these charts real quick. Okay, there's HCHC. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, if you're not in, you know, if you chose, you know, if you are just new, this is your first session. Uh, HTHC is still looking very, you know, interesting for an entry somewhere between where it's at right now, which is 41, 
down to about 40. We have a stop loss in place, I want to say at uh, about uh, uh, 3940, 3930, something like that. Just, just really tight on the bottom here. Um, please, you know, please use controllers. Please use conditional orders if you you do put in a stop loss for your in here, where you're not showing the market maker where you exactly where your stop is. So you can actually go a little bit even below that. And uh, yeah, I'll have to double check to see where my my stop loss is. But this is really shaping up well. We yes, we dropped the the 50 day moving average, but we're going sideways, Just keeping a really nice tight pattern. And so just look at think of that as being a, a spring that's tightening. And so we may blast to the upside. What may, you know, propel it up to further up? Well, it has earnings coming up on the week of 822 or the week well, on 822 after the market closes. So that turns out to be about a week from now, a correction, a month from now. And so now's the time to be looking for, hey, does this have the potential for providing Good five, five to ten percent run going into earnings. What has it done in the past? Well, as we see over here, here's the earnings date here. And let's go back and check a couple of the last ones. Here's an earning date here. If we go back, you know, just here's earnings uh, right there. Okay, on the 14th. Well, if we go back to the uh, 14th of May, we go back to approximately the 14th of, of uh, April, which is about there. Yeah, did it have a 10% run? Yeah, it actually had closer to about a 14% run. How about lat prior to the last one? Well, even if we just go to the last week prior to the earnings, we had an actual gap up run of about at 10% or so. So a good candidate for, uh, for doing the pre-earning runs, is it in a trend? Yes, it's in an uptrend, it's basing, it has pulled back. Wonderful candidate for that. Okay, um, GLD, let's talk, GLS, GLD, there we go. Let's talk GLD really quick, what's going on here? Okay, one of the things that we, we, um, we were anticipating that we were going to get a stop here at this 117 level. It did not stop there. It went on, drove on back down to almost to the lows here from uh, July of last year. But now we're getting a, what could be a reversal candle on a weekly chart. Long, it's wiki on the bottom and showing that we may, you know, this may be the spot where it draws its line in the sand and says, I'm not going any lower. What am I looking for? I am looking for a couple of things. I would like to see my TSI start to turn up. I, I am very glad to see my um, market forecast on a weekly basis. Uh, we basically have now had a three line cluster. And that typically means somewhere between one and four trading periods. So that means one in four weeks, we should get a reversal that will move up. Now, prices can drop lower while we're waiting for that reversal, but it's telling us that, okay, the, the reversal is near. If I bounce over here to a, I'll blow this up a little bit so we'll see it a little bit better. There we go. Uh, if we bounce this over to a weekly, um, a daily chart, as you can see, what, what we had is we came in and we put a bounce. That is not a reversal candle. The one before that is not a reversal candle. We have kind of a reversal signal today with a with a, a gap up, but it hasn't gapped up clear of yesterday's candlestick. So in reality, these are not reversal signals. These are not reversal candles. One thing that is a reversal clue is we have TSI click ticking back up, showing some positive, positive divergence. So that's, those are two really good clues. But again, no reversal signal, you know, no reversal signal here. Ideally, what I'd like to see happen here is, well, here, let me draw a couple of things in here, is 
look what's happened as we broke down from 128 back in uh, um, fe uh, February. Look what happened. We came down, dropped down, hit a low, ricocheted up. And every one of these little ricochets up just happened to coincide almost uh, exactly to where it went up and hit on the way down. It went up, busted its head, dropped. Same thing over here, had a level of resistance right there, ran up, hit the resistance, and then fell back down. So given that that's, the, that's what the pattern has been, well, what we can do is basically look at, okay, if this is just part of a continuation move to the downside, we can anticipate a move back up to where? To about the 117 level. That's where the past um, a swing lows were. And then a reversal off that and back down. Uh, if by chance, but, but with that being said, we do have these other indications, these positive divergence here, uh, a, a solid bounce off that very strong support that's been hit one, two times in the past. This is the third time it's being hit. Potential reversal signal on a uh, uh, reversal candle on the daily chart, or correction, weekly chart, that would overshadow the daily. So ideally what we may see is, is we come down here, we do a little bit of a bounce, Come back down again, retest, and, you know, early into, you know, we could do that going into August with another week, and then, bam, away we go from there. Um, that is the concept. We go back to July on a weekly chart. I'll go back here to, what was this? Yeah, this was July of last year. Count the weeks. We had a bullish reversal signal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks from the reversal signal up to the high. And so what I found is that these, these swings, like we have last summer between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, somewhere between five and eight weeks is how long the run takes. And so, like I said, we're now waiting for the reversal signal here on gold. And what would I be interested in getting into? Well, one, I could just straight buy gold. Two, I could sell puts against the gold. Uh, uh, three, I could, uh, what else could I do? I could buy calls uh, against the gold. I would want to look out to um, October, though, to buy those calls. And they're fairly inexpensive. So that's that. Let's look at the, a couple of the other ones that we're, we're looking at going. But uh, um, what, what I view is just the other thing is just the three time leverage ETF, JNUG. Again, it is uh, on a weekly, it has popped right back down to its past resistance. Uh, you need to be looking at JDX, I think it's GDX. Yeah, or G, yeah, GDX. Maybe GDX. GDX. Uh, what that is is just the non-leverage ETF on the uh, 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 gold miners, and it too has pulled right down to a level of support. Got some positive divergence going on the weekly. No reversal signal on the weekly, except we have a wick, you know, a long wick. In reality, this is a reversal signal. It is an inverted hammer at the bottom of a trend. And so that would be, could, could be considered a reversal signal. We get a TSI tick up. And so I would say that, that uh, uh, J, uh, GDX and or JNUG is pretty much, you know, getting ready for a potential buy. Uh, I promised myself this time I'm not going to try to snip at the, at the bottom as much as I'm going to wait for my weeklies to show me something. Show me a reversal signal on the weekly. Now, let's see if I move on up from there. So uh, any questions on that? Because that's, uh, sorry I spent so much time on it, but uh, I really want folks to be able to benefit from the, the seasonal trade in gold. And remember, there'll be another seasonal trade towards the, you know, in the end of October into November timeframe on gold. Okay, uh, the last one, last couple, I'll just take a real quick look at.
Uh, the last couple I'll take a real quick look at. It. And these were some of the ones we put out over the weekend. Uh, I'm watching TAM team for a potential um, buy into earnings. It does have earnings coming up on the 26th, which is, uh, and that's uh, after market close. No, is that correct? Yeah, that would be Thursday of next week. Uh, I don't know if we're going to bounce higher from here or not. Ideally, where we want to pick up these pre-market pre-earnings pre trades is at a month to two weeks prior to. And as you see, two weeks prior to this, it would have been a good entry back here. However, what we may get is a little bit of a one to two day pullback and then run for about three, uh, 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 run for about 3%. So that's team. And the other one I like, now again, team earnings last next week. Okay, I'm getting a really nice little pullback on Grub. What's when's Grub report? Grub reports on the 25th BMO. So um, I'm not gonna buy into Grub right now. Uh, I would like to see it drop a little bit further, but it, Monday and Tuesday are gonna be the only two days to be able to trade this. And so again, it may be, if we go from where we're at back up to the past highs, we're looking at about two and a half percent. So you may say, Dennis, not worth the effort. But there's a lot of other uh, stocks that are out there uh, with earnings coming up. You've got uh, Adobe earnings 913. You've got Twitter coming up. Well, uh, Twitter has earnings uh, BMO on the 27th. Uh, uh, Venom, VNMO uh, comes up on the uh, 31st of July, and Momo. Momo may be one that you want to take a look at. It is out there two, uh, uh, on 821. And then we also talked earlier about HTHT. So real quick, that's it for today from me. Any stocks you want me to take a real quick look at? I'll do two. Oh, okay, Amazon. Amazon. Okay, what's Amazon telling us right now? Well, one, it's getting ready for earnings. Uh, earnings seven twenty six after market. So after on Thursday next week. Uh, next week will be a really uh, you know some of these entities will move the market. Should should move them quite well. Uh, Amazon is one of those that can do that. It looks like, Steve, like it's doing a pullback here to about 1,800. Um, you know, unless you're already, you know, long the stock, I don't know if I would want to jump on it or not Not right now. You may want to look at, because it moves, you know, like 20, 30 bucks a day, if, you know, uh, if not more. Uh, so if, if, if you want to attempt something, you may look at, at buying a... Uh, an out of the money call option to trade into earnings, but sell it the day of earnings prior to the announcement. Uh, that way, because, and the reason why, and I'll pop that up really quick and show it to you. Maybe, let's see what's going on with the Aunt Yamazon. As you can see, normal um, okay, your normal um, um, implied volatility on Amazon is down here in the 30s. You know, it, it's fairly stable. The week of earnings so far, it's up to about 43. So it's not really that huge. But you can still look at, okay, if I go up and uh, uh, if it gains another 20% in uh, its uh, um, implied volatility, that can drive the price. Now, now, of course, these are pricey options. And so, you know, it's going to depend on you on what you want to do with it. But if you got here to about a 0.4 option, you get the 1852s for about... $33, that would be $3,030, $300 for one contract. And at 1852, 
is that within the reason of, yeah, I mean, if it rebounded from off the eight-day moving average and rebounded back up to the top, it's going to come close. And if it does that prior to earnings, you're in good shape. Uh, STX, STZ. Yeah, uh, George, it looks like a pretty, this looks kind of interesting. Uh, I don't, let's see, what is this? This is a Constellation Brass. Yeah, they, they, they uh, what do they sell? They sell wine or beer or something like that, don't they? So, weekly looks good. Nice uh, hammer at the at a, at a support level. Daily looks okay. It's got some support down here at 20, 20 uh, at about 211. And it has, well, it already had earnings, right? Yeah, so on 629. So it's not going to have earnings again until about 929. So, yeah, it, it, it right now is stuck in a, a, a uh, what appears to be a, a, a horizontal, um, horizontal trading range. And so it may very well bounce here, run all the way up towards the top, about a $15 gain. And so, Corona, it sells Corona beer, huh? which you have to supply, supply your own line, right? <laughs> and one last one, ANX. Mark, that's not coming up, buddy. I haven't got an understanding why. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Uh, I, I, I wanted to spend the time showing you what's going on with gold, just so that uh, uh, you'll, you'll be prepared. Um, just keep an eye on it, uh, and I will send that alert to basically everybody who signed up on, with the Active Trend Traders on JNUG when we have, when the setup is confirmed. So with that, I want to say aloha, God bless everybody, and let me go back to the and what one last thing to show you. Uh, we'll be back in about a half hour for the final hour for our premium members. We're going to talk about the, you know, the trades that we just did uh, on, on Tesla. And I found this picture. Somebody sent me this picture, uh, and I thought it was really, really wild. Sometimes in our trading life, we can get upset, uh, just like this tree gets upset. But the fact of the matter is, is, is even when we get upset, if we'll basically sink down a new root system, we will not be disrupted. Continue, and, and we want to continue to grow, no matter if we've been knocked down or not. So have a great weekend. Trade well and prosper. God bless everybody. Aloha.